It is Sunday, April 7th, day before the eclipse. Meteorologist Danielle Noyce here for One Degree Outside. And we told you we were going to bring you any updates as necessary about the cloud cover forecast in particular here. So I want to dive in, give you just a quick but short overview of what's going on. So I'll share your, um, my screen here and show you first a look across the Northeast. You get the path of totality here, and we are talking about some clouds coming in. You can kind of see that gray shading on the map. Let me show you the view of the country. Uh, from San Antonio to Dallas, Indianapolis actually has a signs that there may be a little bit of brief clearing that comes in. Buffalo, Messina, New York, cloud cover. And yes, even in the Boston area, but there's something very important to look at in terms of what type of clouds these are. And Matt talked about this a few days ago. What you're looking at here is the total cloud cover percent. And you're seeing all the way from Burlington, stretching back down into most of Western and even central New England, these numbers say 90 to 100%. But, and here's the key, they are high altitude clouds. So in the atmosphere, of course, there can be low, mid, high level clouds. And what you're seeing here in this map, in the blues and then the yellows and the reds are the mid and low level clouds. So in other words, the clouds that are most likely to obscure your viewing and to kind of blot out the sun so that you don't get the peak viewing of the eclipse. Where are those? Not over New England. Okay, so you get west of Syracuse, down to Buffalo, Pittsburgh, you're into some of the mid and low level clouds. And then they do get lower from Nashville, back down to Shreveport, the Houston area, in and around the Dallas area too. So still bodes well for viewing across New England. Let me show you here the cloud cover layers. This is in percent. So the top right-hand panel you see here, these are high altitude clouds, cirrus clouds, okay? So some of you may be saying, okay, what, what does that necessarily mean? These are the clouds that are literally, you know, 25 to 30,000 feet up in the atmosphere. The low clouds, this is the top left-hand panel, there's none across New England. Even mid-level clouds, there are none. So the good news here is these are the clouds. Yes, they're wispy. They're high in the sky. They'll blot out the sun a little bit in terms of kind of like filtering it out, but they should not inhibit any of good eclipse viewing across the Northeast, including for the path of totality here. So what you're looking at, high temperatures, no change to our forecast here either. I mean, this is remarkable for April, right? Temperatures will be running in the 60s for central and southern New England. Path of totality, northern Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Highs, you know, in the middle to upper 50s. So it's going to be an ideal day for viewing. couple more things I just want to show you really kind of neat. So what you're seeing here is the incoming solar radiation. Okay, I'm going to play things through. This is at 2 p.m. tomorrow. And you can kind of see the legend here at the bottom, the deeper greens yellows, oranges. This is the incoming solar radiation from the sun. I'm going to go from 2 to 3 p.m. Ready for this? Goes to zero. This is actually over uh, where the path of totality is going to be at this time at 3 p.m. So obviously it's a little later for us here in New England. It's more like, you know, 325 to 335, but this is where the sun will be, where it goes to zero. <laughs> that big, almost, oh, that big white uh, circle you see from southern Illinois into Missouri, northern Arkansas, that is really kind of neat. Another way you can look at this too is the sensible heat net flux. Basically what you're seeing here is how much heat is being exchanged between the Earth's surface and the atmosphere. And this is through direct temperature differences, okay? So stick with me here. This is 2 p.m. tomorrow. And I wanna show you what happens at 3 p.m. when the path of totality is coming up in those same areas. Boom, goes to zero, goes to negative numbers. So the heat being exchanged between the Earth and the atmosphere goes negative because there's no sun where that path of totality is happening and even extending into the Midwest. So a uh, pretty kind of remarkable scenario that's going on here. A couple different things to keep in mind, right? Which is that, you know, you have to have your solar eclipse glasses. I bet a lot of you already had it, although I've seen some reports today of people that are trying to find them and they're sold out. So We've got a pack of 10 here if anyone wants to borrow one. But um, a couple other things to keep in mind if you're headed to northern New England, obviously the traffic, everyone's been mentioning that. But with the recent snow uh, and obviously the wet conditions, this is mud season across you know northern New England. So don't go off a you know little side street. You don't want to risk being stuck in the mud. Also be prepped with snacks, 
Um, anything you may need in the car in case you get stuck in traffic for hours, which is supposedly going to be an issue, obviously, I think, especially after a totality, people trying to go home or get to their des destinations after the eclipse happens. So as always, we want to hear from you, pictures, videos you take, you can share them with us, one degree outside, the number one degree outside, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all social media, and happy eclipse viewing.